Patty Lowe. Who's you? Good to see you up north again. Miigwech. Your home territory. Yep. It's good being here. Wonderful. It's kind of a celebration. 25 years of the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. Uh, it's old home week for a lot of us. We're old allies from the 80s. Um, how are you feeling? It feels great. There's such a wonderful energy in that room and just here on the reservation. I mean, people are really pumped. We were talking about the fruits of treaty rights. Right. You've uh, studied them, you've lived them, you've uh, exercised them, you've enjoyed them. Uh, what, what are some of those fruits? I think there's maybe three things that I think are really important. One is that the rights are preserved. I mean, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, etc., will have those rights, and this state recognizes that. I think that's absolutely critical. The other thing is the education that came out of it. Um, Act 31, outsiders, you know, mainstream Wisconsin school children now must learn about Ojibwe treaty rights, sovereignty, Wisconsin history. Um, but I also think that we learned something about ourselves. If you're going to put your life on the line, you know, for, for fish, you better know that maybe those treaties are something about it's about something more than than fish and I think what treaty the whole treaty rights boat landing struggle made a lot of us do was go back and reread those treaties talk to our our elders about what that meant and I think what we're seeing now this sort of cultural renaissance I hate to use a mainstream Western word like that but this renewal this this cultural renewal that we see in in our artistic activities in ceremonies teaching stories. I think that's a legacy of treaty rights. And then um, the, the final thing is, I think, the environmental awareness. Uh, I think it's the Crandon Mine, for example. Uh, treaty rights was maybe the last thing that was separating us, protecting us from having one of the largest sulfide mines in North America. And I think our, our legal strength really attracted a whole coalition of environmental groups and friends. We have friends now. Um, people understand that if they have a, uh, a serious desire for sustainability and, and to, um, to really practice environmentalism, that the tribes are their allies. And so, you know, I, I think those are three really important legacies of the treaty rights uh, struggle. When we look at the wild rice lakes, maybe a third of those lakes are inaccessible in northern Wisconsin. The Bad River rice, there was a canceled season two years ago. Yeah. Uh, the fish are uh, getting increasingly dicey to eat. With the new uh, regime in Washington, with the concern about global warming and the changing climate, uh, mm -hmm. could treaty rights be used as a vehicle to defend uh, the ceded territory against coal-fired electric plants? You know, I'm not a lawyer, and so I can't answer that. Uh, I don't even play one on TV. Um, but I think that treaty rights also has a public relations value. It, uh, I, I think that, um, that we can use treaty rights to educate people. And as we saw, once again, in the, the Crandon Mine issue, it wasn't suits that decided that issue. It wasn't bureaucrats meeting at the state capitol. It was a grassroots effort by real people that lived along the rivers, that uh, were concerned about, about mining, uh, concerned about the loss of quality of life. It was real people that banded together and it was a bubbling up. And I think that that's, that at, at its heart, at the essence, that's at the essence of any political issue is the will of the people. I, I want to believe that as a journalist, um, that the will of the people still rules. And so if, if we as Ojibwe people educate people about treaty rights and we explain that we have to protect our environment, otherwise we'll have no gathering rights to protect. I mean, it'll be moot. And so I think if we explain that and we're able to build some consensus and we get that word out and we educate in a good way, that they can be. And the next step, you know, those legal steps, I'll let the lawyers and the suits and the bureaucrats deal with that. But um, that's, that's a reasonable concept that 
people that communicate, those of us in the media and those of us that have plat political platforms, that's the kind of message that we can get out. And that's the kind of message we have to get out. This is Nick Vanderpuy and Patty Lowell on the Bad River Reserve in northwestern Wisconsin for Indian Country TV. Gigawaba, man, Minawa. Thank you.